Hey guys, I'm Taylor Henderson and I'm going back to school with Student Edge. Hi, I'm Simon Morato, and today we're going back to school with Taylor Henderson. Yo, how's it going? <laughs> Good, thanks, thanks for, for having me. Buddy. Oh, thanks for coming in. My pleasure. Tell us what were you like as a student? I mean, I love school because I don't know, I always enjoy it. I came from a really small town. I came from, a, I went to a primary school with only 30 kids. So I, uh, there was like six grade sixes, no, three grade sixes who were all school captains. That was hilarious. So, and then high school um, was a little bit bigger. It was about just under a thousand kids. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, um, I, loved, I loved school. I, I thought it was pretty good um, until like I got some results back and I maybe I, wasn't the best, so okay. I fell back on music and kind of worked out for me. It worked out fine. Well, I mean, okay, so so you didn't get the results you necessarily wanted. I mean, no, actually, I did I did all right. Like, okay. at the end of it, we have, down in Victoria, we have, in, like, the ATAR score, and I have VCE, and that's how it is down there. I think it's a little different up here. So VCE and IB, and it's, it, yeah, everywhere's different. But um, and I got 86.5, which is pretty good out of 100. So... That was really good um, for for me. I thought that was really good because I I did I didn't do any music at school. I studied I did design and technology. I did I loved maths. I was obsessed with maths. I loved numbers and figures and stuff. That's what I was like. Um, English wasn't my forte. That was really bad. But only I don't know why. But see, I I'm, I love lyrics. I love writing music. But when it came to English, and I I don't know, wasn't the best at it. But um, I just I loved school and I loved. I loved, I had really, a really close group of friends and stuff and I'm still, we still keep in touch all the time. We all grabbed dinner about a week ago, all of us from school and yeah, so it's, it was, yeah, it's always been a good spot. So when did music come into it then for you if you didn't study at a school? Was that even an option to study music? To be honest, no, no, I never made it an option because I didn't think it was something that I would do, you know, I, I, I wanted to be a builder. That's what I, I did, that's what I looked at. So, and then I went to, then I started after school, I, I couldn't kind of find, I, I mean, I loved building and I, I, I studied that. I did design and technology. And, but then, I don't know, I, it, I worked with dad and that was great. And, but then, you know, I wanted to also, I loved, I loved massage. I wanted to be a masseuse, believe it or not. That, this, is, this is how weird it was. You I, could have been the masseuse builder uh, musician yeah, that, I mean, that yeah, Australia's been crying yeah, out for. I know, <laughs> Australia's been wanting this, you know. <laughs> But um, I, I guess music was something I felt that wasn't reachable. And I think my dad always said to me, he always said, you know, you, you can only make it if you're, you know, you can, you can only be on radio if you're, you're Justin Bieber or Katy Perry or Taylor Swift. And that, that's, you know, he always kind of belittled that dream of me. And, in, you know, my dad is awesome. Like, I'm really close with my dad, but he keeps me grounded like that. But, and he's always normally right, but I felt like I just wanted to prove that wrong you know and I really wanted to push myself and and try hard so I, I didn't study music I studied everything else as kind of the safe options but I tried really hard with music and I got signed three years ago and I've just been on a, a national tour all around all around Australia with a new album coming out and it's just been incredible absolutely yeah. and you've had a couple of number one albums so it's obviously yeah. worked out well I guess when did you kind of realise, no, this is what I have to do? And, and did you kind of have to have that conversation with your dad or even with friends to say, I'm actually going to have a crack at this? Yeah, I will. Basically, like, 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 like I said, I, I was doing a massage course, right? I did that. And then my mate said to me, you need to stop doing that. Because I'm like, why? They, they, they were saying to me, they feel like it, I was taking an taking easy, easy way out to you know, not focus on music. And so they basically talked me into doing doing music. So I tried it and then basically when X Factor happened, um, I got off X Factor and it changed my life. So basically I, I, was, I live out of a suitcase now. I'm always flying around the place. And I did have to tell my parents, like, this is just how it is now. And, it, and you know, I went home for the first time a couple of days ago and I haven't been, I wasn't home for a month and a half. So there's a lot of traveling and a lot of flying around and, but I'm really glad some some people kind of told me to do what I love because I love doing this. It's so much fun. I get to meet cool people like yourself. I get to. <laughs> I mean, if this is the highlight, people <laughs> like yourself. No, no, I'm joking. No, but I get to. I did get to do all these things where I get to fly around, meet heaps of people, perform. 
um, meet fans and release music and it's really good. Well, tell me a little bit about that decision to actually go for X Factor and even Australia's Got Talent, I suppose, was first, really. Yeah. So tell me about that kind of moment where you go, OK, if I'm going to do it, let's try totally. it this way. Totally. Like, well, see, I first went on, before I went on X Factor, I went on Australia's Got Talent with my dad a couple of years, years ago. And I finished third, my dad came second, and then Justice Crew came first. So it was kind of this weird thing. After, after I came off that show, I got nothing out of it. I, I, that's why I really fell, that's why I, I wanted to do these other things. I wanted to be a builder, things that were more stable. But when I, when I went on X Factor, it was a big decision because I really had to, I, in my head, I had to, I had to either win it or come second. Because if I came third on the other show, you know, I really had to, I really had to go hard. So it is, it does take a lot of guts to do it because you're getting judged by all these people, not just the judges, but an audience and all of Australia. So you open yourself to so much criticism and, but you have to take it positively because um, if you don't, then it can really spiral and, and be a bad effect. Because I've had people that have loved what I do. I've had people that might not necessarily love what I do, but that's, you can't impress everybody. You have to take that and cop that on the chin and, and know that if you love it, then someone else is going to love it because that's when it connects. Well, look, coming second and third is, is a massive achievement. Yeah. Did it take a moment though immediately after those kind of results where you do kind of have to reckon with a little bit of disappointment? Um, no, you know what? I, I felt like when I came second, it was the best decision because Dami deserved to win. She had such a ridiculous voice. So I wasn't at all like, oh, like, what is this? You know, let's <laughs> flip the table over. This do you have any regrets about your teenage years, about your school life, anything you wish you could um, do over? Regrets? I, I don't know. I think at the time when something bad happens, you feel like oh, should, that should never have happened, you know. And as a kid, you know, I'm 23 now and I'm, to be honest, like, you know, you still make mistakes. That's how it is. But um, that's the nature of the beast. That's life. But I think if you don't look back at it and learn from it, I think then that's the biggest mistake. Once you make something, you're young, that's gonna happen. You have to accept that's how it is. And I was brought up in a really like Christian, really strict vibe, you know. I had a, I, I, in this church that, you know, you're, if, you, if you did something wrong, you, you felt really guilty for it. And I've learned that over the years that if something happens, you have to accept that's how it happens. You just have to have grace and understand that you can move on um, and you just have to forgive yourself and make sure that the people that are around you are good people. Because the second you put yourself with other people that kind of have a, a bad influence on you, that's where those mistakes can keep happening. Yeah. Taylor, thanks so much for coming in. Oh, mate, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Sorry for waffling on for so long. We love it. We love it. <laughs> thanks, Perfect. buddy. My pleasure. Thank no you. Problem. Hey, everyone. If you enjoyed that video, subscribe to our channel on YouTube or find more of our stuff at studentedge.com.au.